Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to see that how we can do subdomain takeovers, what are subdomain takeovers, why subdomain takeover happens, and how we can do subdomain takeovers in real world scenarios. Okay, but before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I showed you that how I have hacked over 10,000 Unimare routers and I found a critical zero day vulnerability there, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can check out the link which is showing at the right side of the screen. And now with that being said, let us get started. So first of all, let us try to understand that why subdomain takeover actually happens. Okay. For example, let us say that there is a developer who is actually managing a company, let's say example company, and they have their domain example.com and they have a very specific subdomain files.example.com on which they are storing some files related to the company. Okay. Now let us say that, for example, they are storing some, you know, images or uh, some document. Okay. So what they're doing is that they're actually storing those files into the storage services okay we have a lot of storage services on the internet like uh, in general uh, you know for general people we have google drive we have uh, a lot of other storage options media fire and all those things right so just for the example let us try to say that you know they are uh, storing the files on google drive okay i'm just giving an example okay now let's say that once they are uh, you know uh, saving the files on google drive they are getting a particular link and they have that subdomain which is files.example.com which they are pointing to the uh, particular uh, service domain name that they have got okay for example over here they were using some story services and once they created a service uh, they got this particular subdomain xyz.storage.com and they have pointed their own subdomain files.example.com to this particular subdomain okay now every time anyone who's going to visit files.example.com will see the content of xyz.storage.com why because this files.example.com is actually pointing to xyz.storage.com okay now let us say that in the story after some time they have moved their services okay let's say that earlier they were using google drive okay but now they started using s3 bucket okay so basically they deleted this uh, instance or they deleted this uh, you know uh, service uh, from the uh, from the account from their account and they moved to some other services okay let's say uh, uh, let's say xyz dot uh, uh, xyz dot com okay just just uh, this is just, just an example okay but one thing that they forgot is that their subdomain which is file dot example dot com is still pointing to the domain name that they have you they were using earlier right the service that they were using earlier sorry okay so earlier they were using google drive but now they have moved to some other services but the subdomain is still pointing to xyd xy sorry xyz.storage.com right so it basically means that anyone let us say that uh, uh, another person or a different person or a different user uh, created the account on the storage services with the same uh, you know a domain taken by uh, the previous developer okay which is xyz.storage.com okay in that case what is going to happen is since the file.example.com subdomain is already pointing to xyz.storage.com so if any other people who is going to you know register themselves with this particular subdomain so files.example.com is going to show the content which is present on xyz.storage.com right which is now owned by a different user okay so basically another user or a different user is going to you know uh, have a control over files.example.com okay and this can be actually very very dangerous okay because you know a lot uh, a lot of information usually gets shared by uh, you know subdomains like cookies uh, like even it can be used for some social engineering attacks and all those things okay so this is basically how subdomain takeovers actually happens okay we initially the developers actually have a subdomain which is pointing to their service their external service over here xyz.story.com over the period of time they uh, move their services to some other uh, you know service but they forgot to you know um, change this uh, subdomain from their dns record okay as a result files.example.com is still pointing to the uh, so to the service which is now uh, is uh, which is now no, not owned by the particular company okay so now if since that particular uh, you know uh, service is not owned by a particular company now so any other people can actually register it okay so think for it uh, for a second like uh, let's say that there's an application where you want to create your account okay so if you have a username which is unique 
okay so basically you will be able to register your account right but now let's say that after some time uh, let's say that you have deleted your account okay so anyone else can pretend to be yourself by registering the same username okay and now this the username will be available to them because you have deleted your account okay this is what is happening over here as well so the user has moved to the, the developer has moved to the different domain name different services but they forgot to point their uh, subdomain to that new services okay and this is the reason why subdomain takeover actually happens okay i hope that you understood it and now let us try to see that how we can find subdomain in real world scenarios okay so now let us try to see that how we can do subdomain takeovers okay for that we're going to choose a target and over here we have this target this aws.vpractical.tech so this is basically my website and through this website i'm going to show you that how you can take over subdomains okay so the steps and the method which i'm going to show you will be exact same of how you're going to find subdomain takeovers in real world application or a different application okay so let's see this approach first thing that you want to do is if you're a beginner then first thing that you need to do is just go to uh, firefox or any of your browser and then search for can i take over xyz okay let's search for it can i take over xyz okay and you need to click on this very first link okay now this link is also given in the description so you can just go ahead and click on that one as well and for now let's open this in new tab and let's see what we're getting okay so you can see over here that there is a you know interesting table given okay so you can see that uh, based on some certain fingerprints or certain description about the uh, web application or the you know information that you're getting you can uh, you know confirm whether the target is vulnerable to you know uh, subdomain takeover or not okay so if it's saying the status is vulnerable then it is obviously vulnerable if you are getting uh, this particular fingerprint okay so let's go ahead and see that what are the application which are vulnerable so you can see that aws elastic is vulnerable s3 buckets are vulnerable uh, agile crm vulnerable uh, airree.ru is vulnerable okay anima is vulnerable and so on so many of these applications are vulnerable okay first thing is that let us go ahead and open the website in our browser okay so i'm just going to go ahead and type test aws.vpractical.tech like this okay you can see it is giving hi this is my subdomain okay let me just open this in a new tab okay or in an incognito tab so that we can see what exactly we're getting you can see it is giving us 404 no such buckets okay so first let's try to see that what are the uh, you know uh, what are the errors or what are the message we have of this particular web application okay we have the code which is there is no such buckets we have a message that the specified bucket does not exist we also have the bucket name okay let's try to go ahead and see can i take over xyz and let's see if we're getting any of those messages in this fingerprint okay you see that we're getting this over here this specified bucket does not exist and if you take a closer look you can see that it is saying the specified bucket does not exist right which means that the message is actually clear okay and the domain is uh, amazon aws s3 dot amazon aws okay so basically it means that this particular application and since we can see that it is uh, an s3 bucket so it is vulnerable okay so this is vulnerable to you know uh, 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 subdomain takeover so okay you may be thinking that why i'm getting some uh, information over here we can just do a quick refresh and you can also see that again we're getting no such packet because uh, the browser actually cached uh, the request earlier the previous request when there was some application on test aws dot be practical dot okay so once we have identified the error and once we have mapped the error with can i take over xyz and once we have confirmed that this particular application is vulnerable let us go ahead and create an account or you can just simply if you are uh, uh, you know you want to learn that how we can create an account you can simply go to the uh, respective domain and you can just see that how you can create your own services over there for now let's try to go to aws s3 i'm going to show you how we can take over that one okay because our target is aws s3 first thing is that let me open the browser here and let's go ahead and type amazon aws let us hit enter and we need to click on this very first link okay now for that for this particular attack we actually need to create our own account onto aws okay and it is actually very easy so i'm not going to go through that one okay you can simply create an account by just uh, creating an account on aws and you just need to provide your uh, debit or credit card just for the validation part okay once you've done that you can simply sign into the console like i'm doing over here okay after that what you need to do is you need to go to this services section okay and then since we know that the application is s3 bucket right 
so we simply need to click on this s3 okay and then we are going to create a bucket okay and let's try to see what is the bucket name you can see the bucket name is test aws dot b practical dot tech and we're going to just copy the bucket name we're going to paste it right over here okay we're going to enable this acl because we want uh, to you know uh, want this uh, s3 bucket to be publicly accessible without any issues just acknowledge this let's go ahead and create a bucket okay so we have created our bucket right over here and the next thing that we want to do is let's try to upload something onto this bucket okay so let's upload a particular file so let's quickly create a file and then we are going to upload it okay so let's create let me just go ahead and open notepad and let's create a simple html web page So as you can see now we have created our own uh, html page over here this is index.html let's try to go ahead and upload this onto our s3 bucket okay so i'm just going to click on add files and we're going to select index.html and let us upload it but before that let's go to the permission and let's grant the public read access so that anyone can access uh, this particular file let's click on i understand and let's click on upload Let's wait for a few seconds over here. And we can clearly see that the file is uploaded now, right? So let's close this. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to make our SJ bucket a static website. Okay, because we know that this is a website, right? So what we can do is we can simply go to properties and then scroll down and you'll see this static website hosting. So we just need to enable this one. Okay, let's enable this and we need to specify the file on which like let's say someone is visiting our website. So which is the file that they should see. So we have uploaded index.html. So we're going to type index.html over here. And right after that, we can simply click on save changes. And now we are good to go. Okay, so now if anyone is trying to visit this aws.bpractical.tech, they should see our S3 bucket that is now controlled by the attacker or us. And now uh, they should see something different. Let's try to refresh it. And now you see we successfully getting successfully taken over your subdomain and take over which was the exact HTML page that we have created. Okay. So this is how you can take over someone's subdomain if it is vulnerable. So you can just go ahead and uh, check from can I take over XYZ. Okay. And then you'll be able to understand whether this particular uh, uh, domain or subdomain uh, is, you know, uh, vulnerable to this subdomain takeover vulnerability or not. Okay. So I hope that you've understood it. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. Also, do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity, ethical hacking and bug bounty. And now with that being said, keep learning, keep hacking and Thank you so much for watching.